Welcome. Over the years, Adobe has added quite a few selection tools to Photoshop, and that's great. That said, one of my favorite selection options has been around a long time, and that's color range. So I'm going to go up to select, and I'm going to go down to color range. So I'm going to hit color range, and I'm just going to slide this over. And we have a, quite a few options. You know, if I want to select this red boathouse, I could click reds and it's going to give me the reds in the image. And that's great. It looks like it's doing a pretty good job here. And that's one option. And I like that option. Another option that I find really useful because it gives me a little bit more control. You notice when I pick a color, everything is grayed out. I can go up to sampled colors and all of a sudden there's a lot more information sitting here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click in my image. It's a little eyedropper like we see all over Photoshop. And I just go ahead and click. And what we can see in this little window, it looks like a layer mask and it's the boathouse. Now, if we like under selection preview, we can change this. We could put it grayscale so we see the entire image. And we have a few other options that we can look at. For now, I'm going to stay on none. I don't quite have everything I need because I'd like to have the right side. Also, down here in the water, I want that part selected with it. I have two options, and I'm going to use both of them, actually. I can increase the fuzziness slider. And as I increase the fuzziness slider, and let's go to the grayscale so we can see it on the image. So earlier, when I was down here, we don't really see anything else. But when I start cranking it up, we can start seeing some of the right side coming in and some of the left side. What I like about this way of doing it is that this creates a layer mask and the layer mask we're really seeing a representation of it you know wherever it's pure white white reveals black conceals so if i make an adjustment where it's white i get a lot of the adjustment where it's darker it's less of an adjustment and where it's black there'd be no adjustment so it's really a nice smooth transition i'm going to turn this down a little bit the other option is i can either click on the plus sign over here with the eyedropper or hold down my shift key, which also gives me the plus sign. Well, I'm not sure where in the image I am. So let's go back to none. And I'm going to come down to the water and click on that. You'll notice I got quite a bit going on over here. So let's go ahead and drop that fuzziness slider down. And again, we can take a look at how this looks. Now, you will notice that we've ended up with quite a few different areas over here on the right hand side. And what happens if I subtract them? I'm going to hold down the option key or click on the minus sign. And I'll just say, I don't want that part. And you'll notice it cleaned up quite a bit of it. And I could still fine tune over here a little bit. And I think that's looking pretty good. I might have to do some other adjustments later on. Um, you know, I think I am going to raise it just a little bit because I actually want to see this. We can see there's some light coloring coming in right now, and that's pretty easy to fix. I'm going to click OK. Now, what happens is it doesn't look like we have everything selected. Our marching ants aren't everywhere in the image where we'd want. And that's because Photoshop has to draw a line where the marching ants go, and it's at 50% of the selected. As I mentioned, this will create a mask where part of it is white, part of it is gray. And the area that's selected right now with the marching ants is 50% or more selected. The area that's not, even though it'll be in the mask, is not showing up. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go, let's just do a hue and saturation. So I'm just going to do a hue and saturation adjustment. And right away, I ended up with a mask. And I haven't made any adjustments yet. I'm going to close that. I'm going to hold down my Option Alt key and click on the layer mask over here. And you'll notice now I can actually see what the layer mask looks like. And it's like, hmm, I really don't want my adjustment to hit these areas over here. Well, I'm just going to do this really quick. I'm going to make a selection and my background color is black. So command delete will fill with black. And we could also, you know, I could go to a brush, paint with black. Let me switch my colors there. And so there's a lot of ways to take care of this where if I don't want that adjustment to hit part of my image, I can really just fine tune it, paint on the layer mask itself. So that actually looks really good with that. So I'm going to click back on the icon for the adjustment 
and we'll just double click so I get my properties and I could start changing the hue on it. You know, do I want it to be blue? I can head towards the blue range or aqua. You'll notice I did miss some areas so we can go back and fix the mask with that. You know, if it's a subtle adjustment, I kind of like that we don't have all of that even amount in there. But if we start making a pretty big adjustment, then we are going to want to fix these areas. And quite simply, I could click on the mask itself. And let's see, white reveals, black conceals. So I'm going to change to white on my foreground color. And I could just easily paint that in if necessary. And so we could have done a little better job on my initial mask uh, when I did my selection. So maybe I'll do one more just real fast. I'm going to throw that one out. I'm going to go back to select color range. And eh, it looks like it was pretty good. I'm going to go a little bit higher. Ooh, you know, maybe I will try just the reds because sometimes that might work a little better. I have a feeling we're going to run into the same problem right here and miss that. So I don't think that's going to work great. So I think we'll go back to sampled color. We're going to drop down the range so the range isn't as great. Drop the fuzziness down a little bit. And I think we're looking pretty good. Let me just make sure if I need to add that. Ooh, got a lot more extra in there. Let's get that little spot. But I am going to lose this. So let's see if I can do that with the fuzziness. Well, that worked okay. And I'm going to go ahead and make the quick adjustment. And that seemed to do a pretty good job. Might need to fine tune it a little bit, but we can fine tune it pretty well. We can kind of have a magenta slash pink boathouse. Now, if when I look at the mask, I do see I have some adjustments in here. So I might just go ahead and paint with black. Just, whoa, what did I do? Whoops, I'm painting with white. I want to paint with black and just lose those areas so no adjustments come through. So that's a quick way to use color range. Also with color range, one quick last thing. So select color range. A lot of people don't realize that color range also has highlights, midtones, shadows, and skin tones. Uh, will work really great if you're just trying to select, let's say, the highlights in the image. And I still have my same sliders right here. Now the range starts narrowing it down. I'm going to drop the fuzziness. So now if it's only getting that number, like 230 on the RGB scale, it's only getting right in there, that real bright. If I do the fuzziness, it starts expanding it a little bit. So that works well to be able to do that. And again, we can see it on none here or all these different options. Whoops, don't really see anything because it's just that subtle little area. So a lot of power with color range, and I hope you enjoyed the video.